It is crossover Thursday. We have uh, a really awesome divisional rivalry game coming up between the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the Colts look a little different than the first time these two teams played. Uh, the Titans are going to be a little bit healthier than the first time these two teams played. So uh, a, si a similar matchup, but still a different matchup. Excited to break it all down before we get into it. Want to let you know that today's crossover Thursday is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's so much fun and it's easy to play. No competing with other players. It's just you. Versus the projections available, you pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love prize picks, and we know you will too. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. So, we're going to get into the biggest stories with these teams. Jake Arthur from Locked On Colts. We talked to Zach Hicks last time on the crossover Thursday, so it's nice to have the other half of the new host of Locked On Colts, Jake, here with us. So, Jake, with that being said, what's kind of the biggest storyline with Indy right now? What What's the word on the streets with the Colts? Yeah, so it's a totally different vibe than the last time. You know, after right. the Colts lost to Titans a, a couple weeks ago, it was a low point. You know, we're ready to put them in the dirt and who's getting fired, who's this and that. Now right. they got a couple of wins. Their offensive line had their first good performance of, of the season. Uh, and, and it turned out, you know, they had their, their best offensive output of the year as a result. Mm -hmm. So momentum is really the key here. Like, are they going to keep it up? You know, is, is that same starting five? including Dennis Kelly at left tackle, which you guys are, are very familiar with. Is that the right recipe for this to happen? And, you know, the, you know, if the offensive line lives up to it, we've seen that Matt Ryan can have time to get, get everyone involved, but they might also be getting Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines back. So really this is just a 180 from, from the last matchup, whether that means the Colts can actually beat the Titans who knows because the Titans have owned them the, the last few years like they they've split the away matchups a few years but there's there's not much you know you, you can't say the Colts are the better team yet because the Titans just time and again have have proven otherwise but it feels a lot more optimistic coming into this matchup yeah finally it only took 20 years <laughs> for the right? Titans to go on a nice run against the Colts but you're 100 yeah. percent right and before I get into the biggest storyline for the Titans I did want to ask you one question because Titans fans obviously know Dennis Kelly had a pretty mm -hmm. good year for the Titans at right tackle. The Titans cut him for cap reasons, and he hasn't really seemed like he's been the player he was starting for the Titans since, but he looked pretty good at left tackle for the Colts and moving Matt yep. Pryor into guard. Uh, I It looked like the Colts found their best five offensive linemen. Was that, I guess, was that the biggest difference that you saw that led, you know, the Colts are the going into the week, had the lowest points per game of any team in the league at like 13.3, mm. and they put up 30-plus points. Was the insertion of Dennis Kelly the major factor that turned things around? It looks like it. The last few weeks, they've really been tinkering with that line. They had the same starting five mm. through the first four weeks, and it just was not working. Uh, so Bernard Ryman actually started the last two weeks. Uh, he Lucky. played. Yeah, he played through most of the first quarter last week. And then Kelly took over late in the first quarter, played 70 snaps, only allowed one pressure. And left tackle has been just a mess. That and right. really really all over the line. But, you know, you have your pillars and Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Braden Smith, who you don't really have to worry about. Uh, but Kelly really gave them the stability on that left side that they needed. Right guard is still an issue, though. Uh, so... The Titans are good all, all along the front. It seems they can give the Colts problems everywhere. And we've right. seen that they will move guys around to take advantage of those matchups. So while Dennis Kelly seems to have things held down really well on the left side, I still would be concerned about the Titans smelling blood in the water and, and taking advantage of that right guard spot because that's really still not good. Yeah, well, obviously the offensive line improved, but how real that is, how it consistent that's going to be, and I'm sure we'll talk about that offensive line, defensive line matchup here in yep. just a moment. But on my side of the things with the Tennessee Titans, Tyler Rowland locked on Titans here with Jake Arthur from Locked on Colts. 
the the Titans, it's all about can they close the door? Because if they sweep Indianapolis and they have a game the week after against the Texans, and if the Titans can not only get a lead in terms of their overall record, but have that two and O, you know, head to head, and then the divisional record for Indy at that point becomes such an issue if they lose that mm-hmm. because of the loss to the Jags and the tie to the Texans, that they really only have a chance to go what what is it two three and one in the division mm-hmm. and if there's a tiebreaker scenario which the titans and the colts will probably both be around 10 and 7 9 and 8 is my guess mm-hmm. that tiebreaker scenario is so important so for the titans this is at home the fans are expecting them to win you already beat indianapolis you've beat them a lot recently this is the chance to really take a stranglehold on the division before the titans go into a really tough stretch of games so, really, the, the vibes around the Titans are, yeah, this looks good. We don't really know if this team is good, though. Let's see if, if they can at least win this AFC South and how much better are they than Indianapolis. I think if the Titans were to lose this game to Indy, there would be some real anxiety in Tennessee, and it would flip the vibes almost immediately, kind of like what happened from the last time the, the Colts and Titans played on the Indy side. So. I think it's very interesting to see what kind of team the Titans truly are and uh, if they can kind of close the door, even if it's a little early, if they can find a way to close the door on Indy pretty early in the season. But either way, a lot riding on this matchup. We're going to dive deeper into the game, look at some matchups to watch in this contest. And as uh, Jake already talked about, and I'm sure we'll talk about more, that offensive line from Indy against the defensive line of the Titans will be a key one to watch. Before we get into that, though, do want to tell you guys a little bit about our sponsor, Blue Nile. Whether you're looking to pop the question, have a milestone to celebrate, or you want to let your love sparkle, Blue Nile can help you make your celebration even more memorable. Blue Nile is the original online jeweler, and they offer a huge selection of independently graded diamonds and pieces priced significantly below traditional retailers. Blue Nile has helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. They have easy online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, diamond size, clarity, as well as the setting style. And guys, if you're like me, I don't know what the heck any of that stuff is. And that's why it's just as important that Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. You can call them. You can chat with them online. They're going to be there with you every step of the way to make sure that you get the exact memorable gift that you want at any budget. Shop stress-free with Blue Nile's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Make your moment sparkle with Blue Nile. Go to BlueNile.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKEDON to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. That's B-L-U-E-N-I-L-E, Blue Nile. Dot com promo code locked on to save fifty dollars on your purchase of five hundred dollars or more. That's Blue Nile dot com promo code locked on. Titans fans, Colts fans, we are going to continue today's crossover Thursday. You have me, Tyler Rowland, host of Locked On Titans. Jake Arthur, one of the hosts of Locked On Colts. We just broke down kind of the biggest stories for both teams going into this game. Now we want to get into the matchups. Uh, Jake, I will start here because I kind of let you take things off. So I'll do my part and lead off this one. Um, Mm -hmm. The biggest matchup for me, I know we're going to hit on the trenches. But I'm looking at the Titans' middle-of-the-field players against the tight ends of the Colts. And you could even throw Michael Pittman in there because one thing that I noticed that the Colts did a ton in that game against Jacksonville last week is crossing routes, going across the field, across the formation. Mm -hmm. And they were pretty pretty smart the way they'd do it. They'd have a tight end on the inside. They'd release him vertically. They'd bring Michael Pittman on the drag route right underneath him to kind of clear that linebacker. They would get people in man coverage and just run drag routes and mesh concepts and crossing routes across the field to get matchups they want. A guy like Devin Lloyd, the rookie, got abused over the middle of the field by the Colts. So I'm looking at the Titans' safety group. Last time they played, they had... Andrew Adams and Josh Kalou out there who no Titans fan really want to see out there. They're getting Amani Hooker back from concussion. They'll have him in this game. Not only that, but Joe Schobert played a ton in the second half against the Colts the first time they played 
instead of Dylan Cole, who really struggled on pass coverage over the middle of the field. So Kevin Byer, Ugo Amadi at nickel cornerback, Amani Hooker, David Long, Joe Schober, Dylan Cole, can these guys over the middle of the field shut down those crossing routes for the Colts? Can I mean, the Colts in that game had a ton of success with their tight ends crossing the field, especially in the red zone. I think two touchdowns on that. Uh, those are the only two touchdowns the Colts scored, I believe, were on those plays. So can the Titans find a way to cover the middle of the field, cover those tight ends, specifically in the red zone, on those crossing routes? What they do to do that, I would expect zone coverage from the Titans. At the end of the game last time when the Titans and the Colts played, the Titans went to a ton of... I, I, I actually don't have the NFL high-level knowledge to tell you exactly what this play or this coverage is called, but it's essentially a cover four coverage, a quarters coverage, where the Titans' outside corner and the inside safety communicate who's taking the vertical route because the Colts love running people vertical from the inside to clear out those under the middles. The Titans were in a ton of cover four, and the safeties and the cornerbacks just communicated who's taking the vertical route, and then the other guy dropped down back into the middle to help cover that. So I expect the Titans to do a ton of that rather than man coverage, and when they do that, those guys playing in those zones over the middle of the field, they're going to have to match up well with those tight ends or Michael Pittman across the middle, or the Titans are going to get cooked just like Jacksonville did, and honestly, just like the Titans did in the first game. So the tight ends again, the tight ends of the Colts, against the safeties and the linebackers of the Titans over the middle of the field. That's the biggest matchup that I'm watching for. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I wanted to make sure to, to say something on that as well because Mo Alley Cox had really his only productive day of the season, 85 <laughs> yards and two touchdowns. Like you had mentioned, it was actually to that point, I don't know if, if any team has bested it, but in that matchup, it was the best tight end group performance in the NFL to that point yardage-wise. Yeah. And like you said, Branson last week, you know, and Mo Ali Cobb. Yeah. And Jelani These, Woods is a freaking monster, yeah. man. Yeah. They, those, those guys are on fire. Woods is only getting mm -hmm. better. Um, one guy I actually want to highlight though, and he actually kind of started his hot streak against the Titans is Alec Pierce. He's become a, beyond just looking like a rookie. He actually looks like a true weapon in the passing yes. game now. Yeah. And they're using him like Cincinnati used uh, with him collegiately those 50, 50 balls, downfield shots and everything. Matt Ryan fully trusts Alec Pierce at this point. And you know, that that's great for taking uh, attention off Pittman. Cause as you know, Pittman can, can clear out things over the middle. So I really want to see, you know, size on size the the Titans have some size on the outside at the boundary corner, boundary corner as well. Alec Pierce, you know, he had four for 80 in the last matchup. I kind of expect something similar cause they really want to get him more involved <clears throat> Uh, that Mark, Marcus Brady, the Colts offensive coordinator said on Tuesday, you know, he's, he's not playing as many snaps as Pittman, Pittman and Paris Campbell, but they are going to continue increasing his role. It's been a big thing lately. Reggie Wayne is working really hard with, with Alec Pierce. So I really want to see if Pierce has even more of a coming out party after scoring his, his first touchdown almost in walk off fashion last week. Right, right. And, and, Honestly, that's a great place to attack the Titans' mm -hmm. defense. Christian Fulton has has done pretty well against Michael. Now, Michael Pittman's had his numbers, but Christian Fulton's done pretty well against Michael Pittman in mm -hmm. some recent matchups. And I think that if you look at Christian Fulton, you look at the Titans' safety group, and then you look at that other outside cornerback spot. You got Terrence Mitchell or Caleb Farley. And Caleb Farley is basically going to give up a huge play every single time. That he's uh -huh. out on the field. That's that, you know, he may be 6'2. And in theory, they drafted Caleb Farley because you're looking at Pittman and you're like, we need some bigger corners for the division. You know, yeah. Nico Collins down in Houston, they have some tall guys. Uh, in a perfect world, Caleb Farley was drafted for this Alec Pierce matchup. Like that is, that would be the perfect situation. But unfortunately, he just hasn't shown that he's capable. He hasn't shown that he's an NFL player right now. And that leaves Terrence Mitchell as the other guy who's going to be out there. And if I'm the Colts, and I saw what Terrence Mitchell did against Matt Collins in week three, I'm attacking Alec Pierce and, and Terrence Mitchell all day long. So, yeah, that's that's a great point out by you. And if the, if the Colts are smart and, and they do have a smart coaching staff, then that's what they'll do. 
Uh, one more matchup that I'm going to talk about. Like you mentioned earlier, that right guard position of the Colts is still in flux. I think they had Matt mm-hmm. Pryor there. And even Quentin Nelson struggled uh, in the game yeah. against the Titans with, with Danico Autry, specifically. Autry r- really did some work on him a few times. So can the Titans' interior defensive line in the rush package of Danico Autry and Jeffrey Simmons get in the face? Because we know Matt Ryan is not going to run outside the pocket a ton and kill you like you know, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, the, these mm. got younger guys. And Matt Ryan's done pretty good. Uh, last week, he had like a third down pass where he barely could throw it, yeah. toss it up to Paris Campbell. It was impressive. So Matt Ryan is, you know, can move around and get the ball out of his hands maybe a little bit more than people want to give him credit for. But mm. he's not, you know, the playmaker that some of these younger guys are. So I'm less worried about giving up, breaking contain on the edge with Matt Ryan. I'm much more worried with those older, older quarterbacks. You want to get pressure from the interior in their face and force them to run out because they don't feel comfortable there. So if Jeffrey Simmons and Danico Autry can win on the interior against Ryan Kelly, Matt Pryor, uh, even Quentin Nelson, then that'll go a long way to helping the Titans, um, you know, win this game and, and create some opportunities. So I'm looking at the interior offensive line against the Titans interior defensive line in rush situations is my, my final matchup. Yeah, you, you absolutely nailed that because – in my history of watching Quentin Nelson since 2018, the the teammate in practice he has struggled the most with has was Danico Autry. Right. And that's carried over to when Autry has joined the Titans. You can clearly tell that Autry has these matchups circled because I, yeah. I feel like he kills I feel like he kills the Colts every time. Yep. yep. So the teammate he struggled with, and then the opposing player I have seen Nelson struggle with the most is probably Jeffrey Simmons. So this matchup against the Titans always worried me for those two huge reasons. And right. then, like you said, with Matt Ryan, uh, it did surprise me how much he's able to move around. He's kind Shifty, of a man. He is. He's a pocket yeah. manipulator. He, move, he moves right. up and through. He's not the outside guy. But that, that play you were talking about with the short arm thing, he does stuff mm-hmm. like that a lot, it seems. And right. if But if you're getting that pressure up the middle, that's wiped out. Yeah, so it's going to be tough really, to do that. That's a really good one as well. I think you and I were thinking on the same lines because Colts tight ends and Colts interior line are, were kind of the two things, positive and negative, I, I was focusing on in this matchup. So I think I think it's pretty clear those are two areas that are going to be critical in this matchup. Yeah, it, it's funny too because like the teams themselves, they play so much that they mm-hmm. like know exactly what's going on in each game. Yeah. It's just about who's going to win. We're like... Yeah, that's a great point. I was looking at that too. Yeah, right. that's like there aren't a lot of surprises at this point with these we two know teams. <laughs> we know them. Yeah, we yeah. know who they are. What are they going to do? So that that's going to, I mean, it makes the games even more compelling and even more fun. But we're going to give our game and score prediction in this matchup to cap off this crossover Thursday before we get into that. Do want to tell you guys a little bit about our sponsor, Simply Safe. Here's a sports analogy for you guys. When it comes to burglars, your home is basically like the end zone, and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. That's why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. And I'm not just saying that because it's in the ad copy. I literally ordered my Simply Safe system earlier in the week. It's arrived. It's beautiful. It works perfectly. It comes with a 24 7 professional monitoring agent system. They always have your back, and you know your home is always safe. Um, I love the advanced technology, the monitoring, uh, monitoring control. You can control your system from your phone with an application. You get crystal clear HD live streams of your security cameras. They have break glass monitors. It's not going to like go off when your pet's walking down the hallway either. It's very, uh, very finely tuned. I love Simply Safe. And what I love the most is when you go to their website, it's really, really easy to customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. So go to Simply Safe. Dot com slash locked on NFL. You're going to save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Once again, visit Simply Safe, and that's simply with an I, simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Titans fans, Colts fans, we are going to cap off this crossover Thursday edition 
of the Locked On Titans and the Locked On Colts podcast. We've gone over our biggest storylines. We've gone over our matchups to watch. Now it's time to put some skin in the game and make some predictions. You know, Jake, no matter what happens here, someone is going to get praised. Someone is going to get crushed for being wrong. So we're just going to throw it all out on the line here and get into them. Before we do, I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Colts and Locked On Titans your first listen every day. Remember, it's free Monday through Friday content on your team all year round on all platforms, including Locked On Colts YouTube, Locked On Titans YouTube. Subscribe. Make sure you never miss an episode. But getting in here to our game and score predictions. Jake, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little... I'm a little worried. Although the Titans are playing at home in this game, I picked the Titans to win against the Colts. But even though the Titans are at home in this game, I'm more worried if the Titans are healthy. But the Colts are a good team. And I said this in a Twitter argument with another Titans content creator. I put a $100 bet that the Colts would win more than six games. That's absur- that is the most free $100 I've ever gotten in my entire life. Okay, yeah. the the Colts are going to win more than six games. Like sure. they're a well coached team. They get better as the season goes, as all well coached football teams do. Look at a team like Arizona. They suck at the end of the season because their coach is Cliff Kingsbury. Frank Reich and Mike Rabel, though frustrating, are really good coaches. That's mm-hmm. what we know for certain. So with that in mind, I feel like. The Colts stumbled upon a new identity throwing the football. And I feel like the Titans have almost gone backwards on offense from where they were with the Colts in that game. So for me, I'm real worried about it. I've been going back and forth. I think the Colts win this game 27 to 21. I don't believe that the Titans can score more than 24 points in a football game. Uh, I just don't believe it. And I think that the Colts will find a way to score more than 24 points. I just do. Now, the Titans may surprise me and have another touchdown or play some more offense, but I'm taking Colts 27, Titans 21 in this game. Yeah, I I, I kind of echo that. I think it'll be a relatively close game to a one-score yep. game. I'm also not confident in, in the Colts. If right. this was a survivor pool or, or a, a confidence points thing, it's it's not my favorite matchup. I'm going to give the Colts 23 to 20. Um, I, I really, I, I think Tennessee's defensive front will be violent like they always are against the Colts. Right. But I want to give them some credit in finally starting to get something rolling on offense. I'm glad the offensive line is finally doing something. Something that definitely scares me, though, is the run game. Uh, Jacksonville went nuts last week, like over 200 right. yards. And, I mean, it's it Travis Etienne and James Robinson and, and Jamichael Hasty, so it's not Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry gashes the Colts even when the Colts are like a top-five run defense. So he's going to get his. I think that will propel them to about 20 points. Uh, but the Titans passing game doesn't scare me, and the Colts have done really well in that area. Um, and I've got to, I've got to imagine if they can get Jonathan Taylor and or Naheem Hines back, that'll give them a boost. They didn't do anything in the last matchup. They combined for 42 yards on 21 carries. That's not going to continue. Like surely the, the reigning rushing champion can do something if he, if he comes back. So I think if Taylor and Hines are back and with how the line is performing and the offense is clicking a little bit, I think the Colts eke out a narrow win. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think both defenses are pretty good and will have their moments, but I just trust Indy's offense more than I trust the Titans' offense. So that's mm. basically where where I come down. But just a little recap of things for you guys here. For me, the biggest storyline for the Titans is can they close that door on Indy? Indy had some struggles in the division early in the year. The Titans can, can really get a sizable lead. Uh, even if it doesn't look like it on paper, when you look at the division tiebreakers and the division standings, the Titans could get a sizable lead uh, with this win at home. So they really need to, to handle their business um, matchup wise for the Titans. I'm looking at can the Titans middle of the field defenders 
take away the tight ends in the passing game for the Colts and all those intermediate crossing routes over the middle of the field. And then I am personally have more confidence in the Colts offense than I do the Titans offense. So I'm going to go 27, 21. Uh, the Colts find a way to beat the Titans on the road and keep this division interesting. Yeah. And then I, I just kind of echoed the same thing. The, the Colts are looking for some momentum. You know, they've got two wins in a row, the offensive line, which has been their backbone for years now has finally found some sort of gumption. Uh, do they have the, the right five combination now? Let's hope so for their sake. It's a tough matchup. They struggle a lot with Tennessee's defensive front, Danico Autry, Jeffrey Simmons, Bud Dupree. Those guys probably will give them trouble, but they can maybe still still withstand that. Uh, Colts tight ends could take advantage. Uh, that that's an area the the Titans defense has struggled with a little bit. Uh, but it, in the end, it just really comes down to that Colts offensive line because that's what almost always is their reason for winning or losing. And again, it's especially been the case against Tennessee. Uh, but in the end. I also trust the Colts offense a little bit and Tennessee's offense to me right now is just run based. Their, their passing game does not scare me enough. Yep. Yeah. I, I like Stefan Gilmore and, and the safety group. Those guys have really stepped up lately. I think the Colts win just slightly 23 to 20. Yep. Yep. Well, those are interesting predictions. This is going to be a very important game for how things shake out. And all I know is, in week 17, when we look back, we're going to be talking about these two games and how they went with however the division breaks out. Well, that's Jake Arthur, one half of Locked on Colts. I am Tyler Rowland, the host of Locked on Titans. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to a crossover Thursday here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Hopefully you guys all enjoy the game.